Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah and today I have another natural dye project for you. Um, this was the last experiment in um, a series that I've been sharing over the last few weeks. So if you've missed any of those, feel free to go back in our feed and check those out. Um, I've been trying a lot of new plants. And this uh, experiment is one that I've done in a class before. And um, we did it in a recent class that I taught. Um, but we did it a little differently than I've done before. So the technique is known as eco-printing. And the idea is that you use natural materials, ecological materials, and you use those items um, almost like you would like a flower press or something like that, um, but you transfer those materials directly onto a fabric. Um, now, like I said, I've done this with um, cotton fabric previously, but I knew that it was also possible to do it with wools or silks. And so I decided to try sock blanks. Um, now, sock blanks are a piece of knitted cloth that you can uh, purchase, and um, the idea is that you can print onto it and then slowly unravel it to knit your socks or a shawl or anything else you'd like. Um, typically, they are prepared in a sock weight yarn, a fingering weight yarn, and so they're known as sock blanks, um, but that doesn't mean you have to make socks out of them. At any rate, um, you can also use these for eco printing because they're a ready made fabric. So the undyed fabric, I'll try to show you a section here, is just you know plain stockinette. And then when you add um, your plant material, then you can get interesting designs and different colors. Um, now I had not tried eco printing with the things that naturally grow on our property before. And so in class, it was a fun, um, time to play and learn about some of the plants that grow around here. And for my first experiment, um, you know, I got kind of mixed results, but that was really interesting to compare with what I got with what the other students were getting. And then I was able to dial it in and pick some plants um, in particular that had really good printing results. So the first one I just gave you a brief glimpse of, um, and that is a small wild sunflower that grows in our area. And here's the print. You can see the flower. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to hold this. There we go. So you can see this. This is the center of the flower and here are the petals. And then there must be something maybe in the, I think it's the green um, back of the sunflower. Um, ends up getting pressed in and making um, all kinds of purple and green accents around the flower head. And you can see that there are a couple of different species or maybe they just got in contact with the um, fabric in a little bit different way. And so you get different kinds of effects um, as you go through the sock blank. The other thing is that the front of the flower and the back of the flower are going to give you two different effects. And that's true for any, any plant you're eco printing with. So to do the eco print, what you do is you lay your sock blank all out. You fill half of it with plant material and you want to make sure that some of that plant material is facing up and some of it's facing down. And then you fold the undecorated side of your eco blank or your sock blank over and then roll the whole thing up. And you do need some kind of a separator in there. Um, now we used um, cling film or, or plastic wrap. Um, unfortunately, that's I know that that's kind of an environmental disaster and I'm really trying to cut that out of um, uh, our daily use. Um, but for this class, it was just the easiest thing to manage. I'm hoping to get some reusable either silicone or, or plastic sheeting that I can reuse time and time again so we're not generating waste. Um, but you just want something thin and flexible between those layers so that um, you get a clear print of the of the plant, the leaf or the flower head onto um, the material and you don't get a lot of bleed through and transfer. Um, if you were if you didn't use that divider, you would get a much more muddy kind of mottled look, which also might be interesting if you're using plants that give off different colors. Um, but for for my purposes, I wanted to have these kind of uh, distinct imprints of 
the different flowers. So that's why we made this decision. Um, so that was one test. Another one, and this was, um, I know my mother's favorite. So this was Cosmos. And my mother's actually growing these in a container on her deck. Um, so you don't need a lot of space to grow these. They seem to do really well in the pot. And they are a bright orange uh, flower. And what's great about these is you get that same color in the transfer. You also, on some of these, I love this, you can see all the individual petals of the flower and the whole flower structure here. So that's a great one um, if you're into this kind of botanical printing method and you want to represent um, exactly the, the structure of the plants. If you're just in it for color, it's nice too. Um, you can see the backs of the flowers don't give you that strong print, but the fronts, you get the outlines of each of the flowers. So that was really neat. And you can see that I could have put more plant material on here. I do have some sections um, at the fold in particular where I have a lot of blank, blank, <laughs> a lot of white undyed yarn. Um, so these will give a very um, unevenly speckled effect when you start to unravel the sock blank and knit it up. So what I was explaining was that this is a pre a pre-knitted piece of fabric, but um, you just start unraveling at one end and you can knit right from this. If you don't want to knit from this, you can of course wind it into a cake or a ball and then knit from that. Um, but it, this is a nice way to just, uh, for travel knitting, because it's not gonna get tangled or anything. It's just in this format. Um, anyway, so that was Cosmos. So that worked really well. And then um, I did another experiment with some plants and I wasn't sure how they would turn out, but this was a really fun surprise. Um, so I used several different plants here. Some were from my perennial garden. And I'm sorry, I don't know the names of all of these. Um, there's some yarrow in here. I think that's the kind of bluey, the darker bluey green. Um, but what I really love is this big neon yellow leaf right here. And that, <laughs> get it on camera better, that is milkweed. Um, which I did not know would die, but I had I had sort of a suspicion because it has a lot of reactive chemicals in it. Um, it's actually toxic to eat um, for humans, obviously uh, butterflies like it. But anyway, the milkweed did really well and I was able to get sev several um, prints of the milkweed throughout this, this one blank. So that was a great surprise. So I encourage you um, to try this. Now, if you are using cotton or any cellulose fiber, if you're using a piece of linen, the preparation for that is going to be the same as for dyeing cellulose fibers, and I don't know as much about that, but I do know that the mordant treatments are often very different. So you're gonna to wanna to read up on dyeing fabric versus dyeing wool, um, which is a protein fiber. And so the process I've described will work on um, sock blanks. It will work on woven wool fabric. Like if you wanted to eco print and then uh, cut that up and make a shirt or a skirt or something out of it. Um, and then it would also work on silk scarves. And that's something I want to play around with um, in maybe probably next season. Um, we're starting to get into fall here and it's getting pretty busy. Um, but next season, I want to try eco printing right onto silk scarves because you can get really incredible results that way as well. You do also need to mordant any of your protein fiber fabrics. Again, alum seems to work really well and hold um, a true color. So um, I recommend the alum, but of course you can experiment with different mordants as well. Um, I will have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this and some um, kind of how-to pictures or some in-process pictures for you that'll be on the blog post that's linked directly below this video and um, in terms of where to source the sock blanks um, you can just you know look that up on um, the internet yourself there are a number of sources where you can buy these undyed um, and pre-prepped or if you have um, either a sock knitting machine or some other kind of a knitting machine you could you know potentially machine knit yourself a a long swatch and then use that. Um, but do let me know um, if you try this experiment. I always like to hear your results. And just to let you know, I will have these sock links as well as a number of the yarns that I've been showing over the last few weeks 
available for sale at the uh, Garden State Sheep and Wool Festival, and that's coming up um, September 7th and 8th. That's next weekend. It's at, uh, it's at the fairgrounds in Ringo's, New Jersey, and I'll put the information for that below here, too. Um, it's a first time vending there, so please do come by and say hi. Um, I'm going to be by myself this time, um, and I would love to, to see you um, and to meet you if we haven't met before. And so I'll have um, face cream and um, some lotion bars uh, and some hand-dyed yarn, knitting kits, as well as sheepskins there. So, um, oh, and also project bags. So do stop by. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a new experience and some new vendors there that I haven't met before. So that'll be fun. I'll, of course, have a report for you uh, when I get back. Um, because I'll be traveling next Monday, I'm going to pre-record another episode of the show for you. And that one is going to be on another dye experiment, but it's a commercial dye. So that will be next Monday, and the following week I'll report back on the Garden State Sheep and Wool Festival. Thanks again for joining me, and have a great week. See you soon. <laughs>